didn't really see too much of a connection, but they say they connected. They, they exchanged um, information. Okay. Um, so, you know, I, would, I, I asked her about him. Um, I think it was about a week later or so. And she began to tell me that they um, had been talking on, on Facebook Messenger, right? Like my grandma always said, why would they buy the milk if they can get the cow for free? Yeah, you know, good old grandma always has those analogies. Um, so, so she said that they had been uh, talking on, um, on, on Facebook Messenger, you know, kind of on and off. And so she sh proceeded to show me their conversation. You know, so I'm looking, and it's, and it's a long, it's a long, you know, scroll, right? I'm like, <laughs> like the price is right, like, <laughs> you know, so I'm reading this. And, um, and I'm noticing that, so the guy would say, Hey, what's up? How are you doing? What are you doing today? What's your night look like? Right. And her response would be, so no, mind you, so his, his response is like this, right? Her response is like this whole big, long, like <laughs> manuscript, you know, and it would, it was consistent. Like, so he would ask another smaller question and it was like this big whole long okay first of all I don't like to read long texts and messages and all that right so I know he must have been like are you, are you he must have been like you know he, he probably stopped reading at some point long story short um, I ended up asking her you know like a month or so later you know how things were going because I didn't want to be like all in her business you know and I don't like prying so I asked her, you know, how things were going. She's like, oh, I haven't talked to him. You know, she said, I sent him a text, I sent him um, a message um, a couple weeks ago and um, he never responded. You know, so immediately my first thought was, oh, he was probably tired of like the long <laughs> messages, you know. But so, so long story short, they stopped talking. My analysis of the situation was, and, and they also hadn't talked over the phone, okay? So that's another mistake, and we'll get to there in a second. But my, my analysis of the situation, in my professional opinion, <laughs> there, she was giving too much, too quick. Giving too much, too quick. Guys, they just, they wanna know a lot, but they don't, they don't really want you to give them that much. They like a little bit of a chase. They want you to be a little bit, you know, um, to hold back. They may not act like it, but they do. If they, if they are a Christian man looking for a woman that is going to be a good mother, a good wife, they don't want you to put everything all out, all up, all up front. They don't. They may act like it, like I said, but they don't. <laughs> they, they're going, that is their way of finding out how much you will do, how much you'll allow them to get away with. And they keep all that information in the back of their head, you know? So the more you let them get away with, they're, they're, you know, making a, a mental log, mental log of that and filing it away. So they know what they can get away with, what you've probably let other people get away with. And they're going to remember that. So when it comes time for them to think about if this is somebody I want to marry, they're going to reach back into their file and say, well, she let me do this. And, and when I went over to her house that time, we did that. And you know what I mean? So they're not, they may not feel too comfortable with bringing you home to mom. You know what I mean? So make sure that you're setting boundaries. Like I said yesterday, don't do Netflix and don't do, you know, stuff at the house. Just don't. It just leaves, it's too much temptation and it sends a, a bad message. You know, because if you're saying, if you're agreeing, even if you do do this and you guys don't do anything, you've opened the door. You let him know that you are okay with going to his house, the two of you alone, by yourselves, in the dark watching movies. You know, so then he knows that potentially you will allow him to get away with a little bit more. And although he's a Christian man, although he's, you know, trying to, to walk the right path, he's a man. You know, he's a man. So there are certain things that will pop into his head. He's still flesh, as we all are, you know, and he's fighting it just like you are. But you want to make sure that you're putting yourself in positions that are safe, in positions that let him know you have boundaries, you have expectations, and you are, there are certain things that you're not going to let him get away with. 
Um, what about the Jews? What about the Jews? <laughs> we love Jews too. I mean, I don't know what your question is. So, you know, make sure that you're setting boundaries. Make sure that you are um, letting him know that there are certain things you're not going to let him, you're not going to just go with the okie doke. You know, um, you have expectations that you need him to meet and he should have expectations that he needs his potential wife to meet. Right? Ugh, I missed that one. Sorry, could you say that again? I missed your last little uh, comment. But um, so make sure that you have boundaries. Um, make sure you're not overdoing it. Um, I think people are trolling today, and I don't know how to change the setting. Oh, whatever. So, um, but make sure you're, you're setting boundaries. Make sure that you are um, not overdoing it. You don't want to give too much up front. You know, and I'm not talking about sexual relationships because we all know you know, how we feel about that, but I'm talking about information just in general. No, you don't want to lie, obviously, but there are certain things that don't need to be all laid out on the table on the first date over dinner, you know? <laughs> um, okay, I'll do that. So, right, don't tempt your Christian brothers. That was going to be the other thing. My, my next point, let's just jump to my next point. <laughs> my next point is <clears throat> you have to look the part. And it may sound superficial, it may sound like, you know, like, you know, ungodly, but you do have to look the part, you guys. And Impre first impressions go a long way. We talked about yesterday the fact that men are very visual. Men, first impressions, I I'll even jump to the, to the conclusion of saying that men know in the matter, from, from the point of meeting you, in the matter of probably, and, and talking to you, in the matter of probably about 15 minutes, whether or not they would consider pursuing you for anything more than a sexual relationship, okay? And in, th in this case, I'm talking about um, non-Christian men, you know, because hopefully our Christian brothers are not thinking of that, you know, up front. But, you know, a lot of, of men, they will know in the, in the matter of minutes whether or not you're someone they would pursue beyond a sexual relationship. You know what I mean? And a good percentage of that, I'd say about 70 of that is based on what you look like, how you present yourself. Again, going back to the example of, of um, job interviews, you know, you're not going to walk into a job interview with your breasts hanging out. I've just begun dating a Christian woman and I'm a non-Christian man. The broadcast caught my eye. Cool. Good, Jakeness. I'm glad you're here. Um, so... You know, when you go to a job interview, ladies, you're not going to walk in with your cleavage hanging out and, you know, your skirt, hang, you know, at the top of your bottom. <laughs> you know, you're going to go in applying for the job that you want. You're going to look the part of the job that you want. Just like if you're someone that is looking to get married, you're looking to become a wife, dress like a wife. You know, dress like a wife. Dress like someone who is... Uh, who is showing respect in her dress to her husband. Not only to her husband, but to her God. You know what I mean? You want to make sure that you're not out there looking crazy because it's a reflection of not only yourself, but it's a reflection of your husband or the person that you're dating and a reflection on God. I mean, if you're going to say you're a Christian and you're out here looking at it in a certain kind of way, it's unfortunate, you guys. It really, really is unfortunate, but... It's true. You, you, people will think a certain way about you and they will dismiss the words that come out of your mouth. It's just, it, it just, that's just how it is. Um, and so can, you know, bringing it back to dating, we want to make sure that when you are, um, in, in the dating scene and you are, have decided that I'm someone that you want to date on more of a consistent basis, that you're dressing the part that you're looking, you know, like a that you're dressing in a manner that he would feel comfortable bringing you around mom you know that he would feel comfortable in um saying yeah this is the girl i want to marry you know <laughs> you know and we all know what that means it may it may mean slightly different things for for some people but we have a general idea of what that means um i missed a couple of your guys's comments i'm sorry i, I can't talk and read them I don't know, pray for me, you guys. <laughs> so dress like someone's wife. If you want to be someone's wife, someone's wife, dress like it. Okay, that's the bottom line. To each his own, you can, 
you can you know interpret that how you how you feel I believe as Christians we can still wear our heel skirts and things we just have to be yes exactly exactly I'm a Christian guy and modesty is key thank you Jay thank you Jay Clay modesty is key and you know what just I mean from a Christian guy's perspective when you and we won't we won't place any judgment on you but when you see a woman with her everything hanging out what is your first impression? You're in your in the first five seconds. What is it that you think of this this woman immediately, Jay? Jay said that he was attracted to his fiance because she dressed in a classy, modest way. That's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> he said nasty. <laughs> and I know, I know you're taken now. So, but I, you guys, it's just it's just true. It's just I mean that's how. I mean even kids. Yeah, yeah. I mean. Yeah, even kids, they, when they see people that are dressed a certain way or look a certain way, they think, oh, what's wrong with them? You know, it's true. So, I'm already classy and humble, they tell me. I am not, I am too nice. <laughs> well, I mean, there's also, sometimes there's also being too nice as well. And that's where we get to the discussion on boundaries that we just talked about. Um, but, so, so dress the part. Dress the part. Just as you would when you're going to interview for a job. You are interviewing for a relationship that will last you the rest of your life. You know, so dress the part, dress like a wife. Um, and then the last thing is you need to make sure, <clears throat> we need to make sure that our prayer life is tight, guys. We need to make sure that we are asking God to, not to just bring us somebody. We're asking God to bring us the, the man that is going to take care of us that is gonna be responsible for us, that is gonna be, that we can be accountable to. Um, all of those things that we need in a man, we need to be making sure that we're praying for that. Hubs told me he he liked my, oh, he said he likes your style. Is that what you said? He told me I looked and acted like a wife, even in college. Aww. <laughs> That's so sweet, Nick. Um, but you guys, we need to make sure that we're, we're being prayerful. And, you know, I, I'm gonna be honest with you, I, I, it's hard for me sometimes when I'm here on Periscope and just talking to people about um, being Christian because I feel like a lot of people who maybe are new in their Christian walk or are kind of on the fence, not really, don't know where they want to be in life, I feel like a lot of times they think that I just sit at home and read my Bible all day or they think I'm just like, you know, uh-oh. We don't like that. We don't like those bad words. I hope I deleted them. I don't know if I did or not. <laughs> um, anyway, so, you know, people think that I sit at home and I, I just read my Bible all day or I'm sitting at home cooking and cleaning for my husband and, you know, and, and, I, and I, I mean, there are certain things that I do, but there are certain things that I live my life just the same way as you guys do, you know. But I also know how valuable prayer is and how prayer has just blessed me, you know. So um, I minister on here, and this is great to see. Keep it up. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Um, but, I mean, you. so then you can probably agree that sometimes it's hard. Sometimes talking about these things is hard because people, you know, people, um, they start to think a, a certain thing about you. And we all fall. We all will fall. And um, so... It's like, I don't ever want to portray this image that I'm perfect, guys. I am not perfect. My marriage is not perfect. But it's a work in progress. I'm a work in progress. And I will be forever a work in progress till the day I die. Um, and that's how I try to look at my marriage. That's how I try to look at my life. Um, I don't go to church, but I know the Lord. Well, that's, that's all you need. That's all you need. I mean, the Bible tells us it's good to fellowship, so you should be fellowshipping somewhere. I encourage you to find a church home. But um, knowing Christ is paramount knowing Christ is is by far the most important thing going back to your prayer life keep get get a strong prayer life you guys I'm not talking about going to church I'm not talking about you know all that I'm talking about you need to make sure that you're praying that you're talking with God um, yes make sure that you are um, asking God for those things that we think are little you know asking God for um, him to bring you someone that is going to bless you, bless your life, that's going to pray for you. You know, I haven't seen more room. I haven't. I need to. I've been talking about that with my husband. We're going to see it. We're going to see it. We're going to figure it out. But you guys, we have to stay prayerful. 
you know, because there are so, <laughs> there are so many 